This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the full recovery hose setup on an air conditioning system. We're going to be recovering the full refrigerant charge out of this unit, and we're going to be putting that charge into that recovery bottle. So I'm going to be going over this procedure step by step. If you want to learn more about the procedures we use in the field, make sure to check out our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. So we go over refrigerant recovery, we go over charging and recovery, we go over checking the charge, service valves, the refrigeration cycle, pressures and temperatures. So make sure to check this out over at acservicetech.com. Now we're going to get into it. So in this recovery setup, we're using a Y fitting instead of a manifold gauge set because a manifold gauge set adds an additional hose that you don't need onto your recovery setup. It also adds additional leak locations. So we're gonna make sure that that manifold gauge set stays off. Now this Y fitting is a 3 8 by 3 8 by quarter inch. And so basically what's gonna happen here is we're gonna be attaching this onto the inlet of the recovery machine. So also we have our valve core removal tools. So we're gonna be using these to remove the restriction right here and right here. So you're gonna have a valve core, otherwise known as a Schrader valve in these locations. We're also gonna need a pressure gauge in order to measure the pressure. We're gonna mount that on the vapor side because we have our larger tube on the vapor side. So you know, this system has a piston at the indoor metering device. And basically this system has been off for a long time. So this refrigerant is fully saturated and that means that the refrigerant is in the liquid and vapor state basically just mixed so we're going to be pulling uh, the refrigerant out of this from both sides so the first thing that we want to do is we're going to loosen these valve caps up and we're going to remove the valve cores from these locations now we're going to be using our valve core removal tool on the side of the valve core removal tool I've already taken out the, the valve core here. I'm going to be putting my vapor gauge right onto the side of this. As well, I'm gonna back this up. And so we're gonna go ahead and mount this right here. And we're also gonna mount this one here as well. So basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that this is snug right here, this is snug, this is backed up because you're not going to be able to turn this valve or do anything until this is backed up. It's also going to be in the way for while you're hooking up. The whole point of doing this is to remove the restriction right here at the valve core so that we can get a faster flow for the recovery. The whole point is so that you can get a more accurate pressure reading while recovering the refrigerant because you're removing the restriction as well, you're speeding up the recovery process. So what we want to do is we just want to press in real hard and we're going to do that with our thumb right here. We're going to turn this counterclockwise until we hear a click. And that means that the valve core is completely out. All right, the other thing is we want to loosen this up a little bit because the rubber grommet in here may be squishing up against the valve core and not allowing it out. So I just want to make sure I got it. And there we go. So there's our, there's our old valve core. Now we're gonna do the same to the other side, but this is the only one that we need a gauge on. After this, we're also going to make sure that we're, we're tightened down here again. So we installed this gauge so that we can get an accurate pressure reading. You could just put a digital gauge there, but basically we want to trust this gauge, the larger one, instead of just these smaller ones. These are just kind of giving you an idea what's happening. This is giving you the exact pressure uh, that's, that is red right here at this port. And so now we're going to hook up our hoses. You see we, we left these kind of closed so we don't get uh, humidity inside our, our hoses here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by hooking up our recovery tank. So we're just going to go from the outlet here and we're going to go over to the blue port. The reason is we have saturated refrigerant in this unit. So 
that's that. Now we're going to hook up our inlet. Our filter dryer is here in order to basically just to protect our recovery machine. And if we were going to reuse refrigerant that was in the recovery bottle, however, since this already has a little bit of refrigerant in it, we're just going to keep adding uh, charges from separate units, which means we're not going to be able to reuse this because you can't transfer refrigerant from one system to another unless they're uh, for the same owner. We want to make sure that this arrow is pointed towards the recovery machine. And what we're doing now is we're going on a 3 8 hose from here. So this is 3 8 and this is quarter inch. And so what we want to do is we're using large uh, recovery hoses so that we can recover this faster. These larger hoses will allow a larger amount of refrigerant volume to be recovered. So the whole recovery process is going to be done faster. You want to use large diameter hoses, but short, short is better. So really, if you had uh, three foot hoses, that would be a lot better than say a five foot hose. So now that we have everything connected, we just want to go through one more time and just make sure all of our hose connections are snug. Remember that if you have a leaking connection, what's going to happen is we're going to pull air into this recovery bottle. We just want to make sure to not add air into this bottle. So before we purge the air out of the system right here and before opening the tank what i want to do is i want to take this recovery bottle off as you can see this is a new recovery bottle and it's very light and so we have a tear weight right here of 28.1 and so we're going to turn our scale on now and we're going to zero that out and we're going to make sure that right now we're on ounces and so we're going to change that to pounds So it says 28 and a half pounds. And we said our tear weight was 28.1. So we can tell that we just have just a little bit of refrigerant in here. So you know, I already vacuumed this new recovery bottle down and I broke it with a little bit of R22 refrigerant. So we have about uh, right around 10 PSI in here presently. So this is new, it's ready, but it has been prepared. You wanna make sure to not overfill this recovery bottle. You wanna make sure to not reach 80% of its WC. That's the water capacity, so that's basically its liquid volume. And so this one says 47.6 pounds. And so you basically, you take 47.6 times 0.8, and that's the amount of refrigerant that you're allowed in this bottle. So you add that to your tear weight to get your total weight. So 38.1 plus a tear weight of 28.1, and that equals 66.2 pounds is the allowable tank and refrigerant weight and so basically you're weighing all of it at the same time and right now we have 28.5 so we are good we know that that's empty as well we want to pay attention over here on our rating plate so right here on the rating plate it says that this unit has r22 which is the same refrigerant as in the recovery bottle and it says that it has six pounds one ounce inside and that's the amount of refrigerant as long as the the line set right here did not exceed 25 foot or maybe 15 foot in total length now we're getting ready to purge the air all of our hose connections are tight and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up both of these so you know this handle is shut on the recovery tank. So that's important because we're going to purge the air out of the hose right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open both of these at the same time. And now what we're going to do is make sure to not open the handle. We're going to purge the air out right here. And that's a lot of air that's in that recovery machine as well. So keep that in mind.
So now we've purged all the air out of this. Now we're getting ready to basically turn the machine on, but I also want you to be aware that we have already disconnected the electric out of here and we have the disconnect right here, but we do have the indoor fan running. So you wanna make sure to go over to the thermostat and turn that on fan mode, because what that's gonna do is that's gonna add heat over at the indoor coil that's gonna help you vaporize any liquid refrigerant that's in that coil. I wanna give you one more indicator that there's R22 in this system and it says the outdoor temperature is 87 degrees. If we take a pressure reading and we bring it into the saturated temperature for R22, we're reading right about 80, maybe 81 degrees right now. And this unit, we have this outside, but the line set and the evaporator coils inside. And so we know that we don't have R410A in this system because R410A, it says that pressure converted to saturated temperature would mean that it's 50 degrees outside. And we know it's above 80 degrees. So we know that this is R22. Since we purged all the air out, what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna open this handle. So the refrigerant in the system is higher than the pressure in the bottle. So that's why we have refrigerant leaving the system and going to the bottle until both pressures match. Now this, this bottle only had about 10 PSI of R22 in it. It was already vacuumed and I broke the vacuum with just a few PSI of R22. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the recovery machine on. As we're recovering refrigerant, you're gonna see our scale is gonna display a higher and higher weight because more refrigerant is in this tank. We're gonna watch our pressure because we wanna make sure uh, that we don't go down too low. And so this system, I do not believe it had a refrigerant leak, but we wanna make sure we don't know that, you know, so we wanna make sure that we're not going down very low. So we're gonna go down to about zero, maybe four inch HG. And then that's when we're gonna turn the, uh, turn the system off and see if the pressure rises. If this system did have a refrigerant leak, then what we would want to do is we would definitely not want to recover it any lower than zero PSI because we would be pulling air from the outside into the system and then we'd be forcing that into the recovery bottle. But in this case, we're just going to target zero to four inch HD. So right now we're at about two inch HG. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut these valves off and I'm gonna close the recovery tank and then I'm gonna turn the recovery machine off. We wanna see if this pressure is gonna end up rising. And so we'll give it a few minutes and just check that out. So right now this gauge is measuring the, the pressure within this system. And this green part right here, that's an inch HG. So you see it goes down to 30 inch HG. Anything above the zero is PSI. And so I don't know about the angle of this camera, but it looks like we're at about one inch HG right now. It's been about one or two minutes so far. I'm just gonna let this uh, pressure rise for maybe five, 10 minutes and just see what it rises to if it does rise. So it's been about 10 minutes and you see that we're at 11 PSI. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this recovery machine back on again you can also see that we recovered already about 10 pounds. So that's about four pounds more than what was on the rating plate. So you always wanna make sure that your tank has enough capacity for the refrigerant that you are recovering. So here we go. So I just want to tell you what this was. The, the pressure rose because we had liquid refrigerant in the line set or in the evaporator coil or even in this outdoor unit uh, that basically flashed into a vapor and exerted pressure again. And so that's the refrigerant that we're recovering now is that leftover liquid refrigerant that is now vaporized. So you gotta also remember that this is an existing unit. So these service valves here and over here those were already in the open position. It's the, it's not a backseat position, but it's fully, fully open position. And so the outdoor unit is connected to the line set and the indoor unit. So we're recovering the refrigerant out of the whole thing. So 
So we're at about four inch HG now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shut these valves. I'm going to shut this tank. And turn the recovery machine off. Now at this point right here, this pressure is not gonna rise really because we did give the, the liquid in the line set a chance to vaporize. And so that's basically it right here. And so what I'm gonna also do is I will just shut this right there. So now I'm just gonna disconnect right here. Now what we can do is if you're going to be uh, reusing this line set right here, we can break this vacuum with uh, nitrogen. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cut this right here and here, and we're gonna be replacing the line set tubing. So it's not a big deal that we're slightly in vacuum right now. The other thing is if this system had a leak, we would not wanna pull it down below zero PSI. If you noticed any issue with the, with the scale right here, that just has to do with the vibration and this hose right here. So there's a yellow hose and it has to do with the height of, of this hose right here. And so that's why our scale didn't move at the very end. And so that's basically it as far as the actual recovery process and the refrigerant that's in the recovery machine right now and in this hose, that because there's no purge function on this necessarily, what we're gonna do is we're going to vent that. Uh, that's part of the de minimis rule in the EPA 608 guidelines. If you wanna learn more about preparing a system for refrigerant, check in the charge, recovery procedures, troubleshooting, make sure to check out our book, The Refrigerant Charting and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. We've got the full outline available over at acservicetech.com. We also have quick reference cards and a thousand question workbook that you can use to, so basically uh, as a self-study guide, for this book. So make sure you check all that out over at our website. And we also have free resources there, such as our calculators, our quizzes, our podcasts, our articles, quick tips. And also keep in mind, we have all of our physical resources available over on Amazon as well. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.